Well, welcome to See Here Love and Merry Christmas. I'm your host, Melinda, and as we move closer toward Christmas, we will be celebrating Advent here on See Here Love. Well, the word Advent is the arrival of an important person or thing and is derived from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming. So Advent is the four-week season leading up to Christmas, a season for preparing our hearts and lives for the birth of Jesus as we anticipate the coming of Jesus. It's a time full of waiting, reflection, excitement, and joy, which is our third Advent theme for Christmas, joy. As last week, we shared about the peace that we have in Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And as we light the candles on the Advent wreath, the circular shape of the wreath reflects the complete and endless love that Jesus has for us. And the candles that we light and are lighting represent Jesus coming as the light in darkness. One candle will be lit each show until all four candles are lit. And our fifth candle, the Christ candle, will be lit on Christmas Eve. And as Christmas draws nearer, each candle brings a little more light into the darkness. People and girlfriends who bring me great light into my life. Did you like that? I love um, that. All right. Yes, I see what you all right I here. Nice transition, I know. <laughs> Cheryl, welcome. Girl, you're looking joyful. Oh, thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing the smiles and feeling the joy here already. Joanna, welcome. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Lisa. Indeed, Merry Christmas. And our special guest co-host, Helene hey. Blake Miller, psychotherapist and national speaker. Welcome. Thank Thanks for being you. with us. To be here. And later on, co-host Brooke Nichols with her husband Steve will be singing a favorite Christmas hymn and sharing a short devotional and international speaker and author Danielle Strickland will be sharing her thoughts on what joy means to the world. It's going to be a great joyful show I know ahead. Yeah, well, let's get right into our thoughts about joy. A lot of people ask, what is the difference between joy mm -hmm. and happiness? Because mm -hmm. sometimes they're interchanged and, and I think sometimes we even use them incorrectly. Yeah. What would you say? What would you say, Colleen, the difference? Uh, for me, joy is something that does not, it's not connected to situations feelings, circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, joy is something that's deep, it's inner. As a believer, it's something that has been given to me by God. Okay. Where happiness is like a feeling, you know, if it's, if I wake up on the right side of the bed today, then I feel happy. If the right things are lined up in my day and it goes a certain way, then I feel happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, whereas joy I can have in spite of maybe not feeling the happiest. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Joy versus happiness. Yeah, well, I mean, of course, happiness, as you're saying, it's based on circumstances. Mm -hmm. And joy is this sort of deeper reservoir. It's like, you know, like when your tank is on empty in the car, but you know you got like 20 more kilometers that you can do. <laughs> that's the joy spot. <laughs> no, that's good. Lisa, what about you? For me, um, joy, there's a steadfastness to joy. There's a longevity. It's a character that I think, again, God gives to us through the gift of Jesus Christ and just growing in faith. And it's just deep rooted. It it can be expressed in happiness, but it's 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 like a seed, yeah. and it gets rid of all that bitter balls in our stomach when stuff happens. Yeah. Mm. Good. Mm -hmm. Do you find it hard to be joyful in our own lives? Like, if so, why? If not, why? But you know, as people say, well, you know, we follow Jesus, this joy giver. Mm. Um, but do we honestly find it hard sometimes to be joyful, mm. even knowing though that we have this relationship with Jesus, mm. Cheryl? Yeah, I, I think we do because, you know, like, you know, happiness is a sailboat that we're on in, in the beautiful sunny day and it's all these warm feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, joy is an anchor. Uh, joy keeps you tethered in the time of storm. And I think sometimes we um, mistake, we mistake happiness for joy mm -hmm. um, and we'll know it in the storm because the minute something happens and our mood shifts, our world shifts, mm -hmm. that's not joy. Right. Uh, joy is deeper as everyone has said. And so I, my, my prayer is that people would um, seek out joy and, and not sort of this sort of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday happiness, mm -hmm. but that eternal joy that lasts in the worst of situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the struggle for me is that I, I, I sometimes live a lot in the happiness place versus sort of the joy filled place. I let circumstances mm -hmm. dictate and dictate. determine how I yeah. feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's you're a that's a, that's a problem yeah. Yeah. because then your life is always like good, bad, great, bad, yeah. sad. And it's like mm -hmm. always this emotional roller coaster feelings mm -hmm. where my sense is what I'm hearing is that joy is actually the deeper you know, deep anchor. anchor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It seems to me that then, because you know, we are happy with, with circumstances, and I think that maybe happiness can be understood as something that is cultivated by external circumstances.
circumstances, whereas joy is something that you cultivate in an internal, inner way um, yeah. through spiritual growth, the disciplines, the reading of the word, prayer, all those things. It just anchors you. I love that analogy. It anchors you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As followers of Jesus, how do you try to live out a life of joy? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've talked about hope. Mm -hmm. We have talked about peace the, the past weeks. We, we understand the world is in chaos and tension and turmoil um, and at war. How, how do you try to live a joy-filled life? What, what are some of the things that you do to create joy in your home, within yourself, at work, um, with your colleagues and the people that you meet? Joanna. Well, when you said in the home, it makes me think of that sort of philosophy of home cleaning. Like if it doesn't give you joy, throw it away. <laughs> um, but maybe on a deeper level, you know, there's things in our life we probably do need to remove from our life uh, because we have boundary problems that like we're letting, as you say, that it's an external thing that's mm -hmm. coming in and affecting our internal mm -hmm. joy. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the place I find the most joy is when I'm worshiping God. And I know that sounds maybe like lame or that sounds um, like how can that actually be true? But for me, like when I'm in a place where I'm aware of like God's goodness to me, his faithfulness to me, his promises to me that never fail, that his presence is with me all the time. Like those are the places I feel joy. And like mm -hmm. th those are the days where there's this internal thing that's happening that like has nothing to do what the right. day is going yeah. like. Yeah. Um, and that I think the older I get, the more I'm in that place yeah. than in the happiness ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Colleen, what about you? How do you cultivate great joy in your own life? Well, I appreciate what Joanna said with regards to the older uh, that she gets. She's intentional or she is thinking more about that. And for me, the word intentional is what kind of comes up for me. And, um, you know, we have uh, a very young family. We have four little ones. And life can get really, really hectic and tiresome and exhausting and, and, and mundane sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it takes intentionality. Like you, I have to recognize when I'm out of my happy place because things just are not the way that I want them to be. Mm -hmm. And just um, like on purpose, reach down to to access the joy that God has put inside of me. So it's a conscious thing. So consciously saying to myself or to my spouse, like, you know, you're complaining right now or, you know, you know, tell myself, like, stop complaining and focus on um, the joy that God says that I have, even when I don't feel it, mm, yeah. even when That's I don't key. feel it, yeah. saying to myself, like repeating, you know, scripture, which is the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so even though I don't feel it, I, I believe it mm -hmm. and I activate faith, yeah. you know, to, that's, yeah. yeah, that's good. Cheryl. Um, you know, one of the ways that I cultivate joy, um, because happiness was letting me down, <laughs> uh, happiness is a huge disappointment. <laughs> it comes and goes. It never stays. Yeah. Most, um, most how I that's cultivated it. joy, believe it or not, was understanding my identity in God, mm -hmm. um, by understanding who I am in God and who God is mm -hmm. to me, mm -hmm. um, that holds uh, in the time of storm yeah. uh, because stuff will come stuff will go um, and and people change and everything changes yeah. but just knowing that God never changes and this is who he is mm -hmm. and all of that never changes mm -hmm. and that I am seen as the following and those circumstances don't change that mm -hmm. I am still more than a conqueror I am still like you know uh, uh, his beloved I'm still you know his daughter whatever is not there or there doesn't change my identity and doesn't change who God yeah. is. Yeah. You know, I love that. Well, you know, when I look at my own life and seeing my dad work with the persecuted church mm -hmm. of Christians and incredible pain and persecution they endured, but they would sit and look at us and say, but we have this great joy yeah. Yeah. because we know who we are. We know where mm -hmm. we're going. We know what we're about. Mm -hmm. And in all of that, knowing that truth, I can withstand great physical, emotional, and spiritual pain. Mm -hmm. And it always was like, what? Mm -hmm. But I got it. I got it as I got older. As I get yeah. older, I realize it's true. It mm -hmm. Because if I didn't know that, I would have been out and gone a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that is good words and good thoughts mm -hmm. that it's, it's deeper and within mm -hmm. versus being affected by, you know, the circumstances that keep us kind of going up mm -hmm. and down. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like it. Colleen, that you mentioned about, you know, being intentional about scripture mm -hmm. that gives us sort of the promises and, and the truth. And so, Joanna, why don't you share with us yeah. from the good word in Isaiah 29, 19, the passage of joy um, and share with us, you know, your thoughts about that. Yeah. Isaiah 29, 19. Uh, I'll read it and then I'll give a bit yeah. of context for it. It says, once more, the humble will rejoice in the Lord. 
the needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Mm -hmm. And so this is in a time for the Israelite people where they were being told they're about to be taken off into captivity, exile. They're going to lose everything, all of their homes and this place that they hoped for, <laughs> dreamed for, longed for, were promised. And now they're actually being removed from it. Like this is a bad news time for these people. And then the promise of joy to come that once more the humble will rejoice in the Lord and the needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. And it's interesting to see what they rejoice in. Where does the joy come from? It's in the Lord, mm -hmm. in the Holy mm -hmm. One of Israel, in God. Yeah. The joy comes in the midst of their circumstances, in the midst of their hard times. Mm -hmm. And it's in, and for them, it's also in the promise of a coming Savior, yeah. Yeah. Um, which for us, He already has come yeah. um, and He will come again. Mm -hmm. And so we have great joy in that thing and it doesn't really matter matter what's going mm -hmm. on, whether, whether we're here in our context or, you know, in the persecuted church that, mm -hmm. that there's so much we can learn about joy from people going through difficult circumstances mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. Right. That's good. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? When you hear that verse, when mm -hmm. you hear what Joanna said about the context of they were being led into like captivity and yet, you know, there was this promise of they will rejoice. What, yeah. what are your thoughts about that in, in a current day and age now today? For me, it's eyes on God, um, because again, in the difficult time that Israel found themselves in, it's like there's a God who promises these things and it's trusting in who he is. And my personal belief and my personal experience has been the further you are divorced from God, mm -hmm. happiness that fickle partner happiness comes in and huh. takes joy's place. But the, you're, the persecuted mm -hmm. church, always looking to God, depending on him for that kind of undergirding, that's what restores my joy. Mm -hmm. Eyes on God, eyes on Christ. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. good. Colleen, your thoughts? Well, you know, to be honest, it's sort of like a reality check. Mm -hmm. You know, when uh, you don't realize that uh, you've been, you know, making a lot of mistakes and then you've you know, your face with the mirror that's showing you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if the persecuted church, if, you know, people of God could be in scenarios and situations that are so grave, I could never understand and still mm -hmm. find joy, mm -hmm. then to me, it's like, it's like one of those spiritual shakings, like wake up girl, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. stop wasting yeah. the time you've been given mm -hmm. um, by getting caught up in circumstances and things that are out of your control, find a joy yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. fulfill that yeah. thing that yeah. God has called for you today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so for yeah. me, it's a reality check. I it's love like that. the enemy yeah. does his bait and switch and we buy into happiness more than joy because it's instant. It's gratification. It feels yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Cheryl? Uh, if my heart is a garden, then I need to go back to garden again. Mm. I, I'm, I've, I've not buried my joy deep enough. Mm. Mm. My joy is still sitting on a couple of layers that any wind can blow. Mm. Um, I look to the persecuted ones. I look to those that are in so-called third world countries and how they worship and how they pray and how they are steadfast in their joy makes me want to go back to the garden of my heart and like mm. plant it deeper. Mm. Too many things in this uh, first world problems, we call them, yeah. mm. too many things wipe out our joy yeah. and really yeah. they, sh they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And we see in this text like at, at Isaiah 29 verse 19 that it's the humble and the needy. Mm. You know, and obviously for you, I mean, you're the work that you do, right? Yeah. You you talk about this as you work in justice and yeah. activism in the community. I mean, I know it's something that's close to a lot of our hearts, yeah. that the humble and the needy are the ones who can show us something mm -hmm. about what real joy is. Because when you don't have a lot of happiness, yeah. 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 Um, then you got to cling on to the thing yeah. that is deeper than that. Yeah. And isn't yeah. the season of Christmas I was about to say, gifts. this yeah. is the gift. You know yeah. what, Lisa, I was just about to say, and as we look at Christmas mm. and the consumption mm. and the consumerism yeah. that mm. for just a maybe second gives us happiness because mm -hmm. we got what we yeah. wanted or got what we think we deserved mm -hmm. because we worked so hard or because because we are. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe this moment is a check for all of us. Mm -hmm. Dig deeper in, in your garden. Be intentional. Have a moment to just pause and go, whoa, mm -hmm. I am living my life based on what I can get for those spurts of happiness. But do yeah. I really have that deep joy yeah. of the Lord is my strength in me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think as women, we are some gatekeepers on that. We, we actually 
set tones wherever we go yes, we on that joy meter. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta preach it to ourselves. Yes. We gotta sing it to ourselves. If, if it's something we gotta write on the mirror in the bathroom in the morning, yeah. uh, you know, if we're having to like say, a, if there's like a, a true, not a mantra in a bad way, but a true thing that we need to say to ourselves over and over and like, it is a joy and a privilege to serve the Lord today. Yeah. It is a joy yeah. and a privilege yeah. to serve the Lord yeah. today. Yeah. Like whatever it may be that we have to stop letting the lies win. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's powerful because I think we have lived under the lies and believed it for ourselves. And then we're always, you know, you see people and even myself going, I have this horrible life. Mm. I'm not good enough. I don't measure up. Mm. I'm, I'm not in this place. I'm not good, as good as her on Instagram, Facebook. You know what I'm saying? There's so much comparison yeah. and there, you know, what you said, the lies are stealing our joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to kind of like break those, yeah. you know, open and expose them for what they are and say, you know, we need the joy of the Lord. Yeah. I mean, and just quickly, like the joy that God's given to us, like examples, what has he done for you that has given you joy? You know what? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> breath. Breath. Yeah, that's yes. Yeah. Thank you. I thought you were one. Thank you. I was like, I'm ready. Like, like everyone, if everyone who is watching yes, or listening it. just yes, simply takes it. a breath, yeah. that is enough. You could mm -hmm. stop right there. there. Yeah. You go. Breath. Joanna, what what has yeah. God given you that, that has filled you with joy? Uh, I think for me, again, it's, I keep saying it, but it's, like the older I get, it's the knowledge of him in my life mm -hmm. that I have like more and more joy and not just happiness mm -hmm. because of who Jesus is to me. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Lisa, what about you? Is it strange to say that I'm actually joyful for the difficult moments that come into my life? Yeah. There, because there's a depth to that, and yeah. there's like a, a simmering in the presence of God, and it's hot. Like it, sometimes it burns you, but at the same time, you know, because He's good, it's a good thing at the end. And again, from the, the thing I said, just eyes on Christ through the whole. I'm joyful. Yeah. I, he's good. He's a good God. It's good. Pauline, what about you? Well, you know, I've got four little ones and they are, I, I mean, if you cannot see um, joy in the face of a little silly child, <laughs> um, and I've done nothing to deserve that, not one thing. Right. And, and so every day they are a reminder mm. to me that um, there's joy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. And I, I think that in the relationships that I have, um, in the opportunities that I have been given, yeah. um, in the life that I have and the breath that I have, you know, it, it, there are moments if I sit and think about that, wow, I am filled up with joy mm -hmm. and, and thankfulness and gratitude for the one who is the joy giver. And mm -hmm. so thank you, great thoughts, great thoughts. Well now let's go to our friend and international speaker and author Danielle Strickland in the beautiful Tyndale Chapel as she shares her reflections on joy. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Singing joy to the world. That's what we're singing because that's what the angels were singing because that's what the prophet was speaking because that's what Jesus was bringing is joy. And who is he bringing joy to? This matters. He's bringing joy to those who feel like they don't have any. He's bringing joy to those that haven't heard some good news for a long, long time. You know, uh, my son had this uh, surprise party I threw for him and he is his best friend, this little girl who was good at a lot of things, especially talking. And I told her the secret that we we're gonna have this surprise party because I needed her to be in on the thing that was gonna get him to the surprise party. And I remember she's sitting in the minivan. I told her that she could tell him about the party when we got to the driveway of Chuck E. Cheese's. <laughs> and I remember looking in the rear view mirror at her in the back seat of my minivan. And she was literally, I, I mean, I can hardly describe this, but she was like going to explode because she had this secret on the inside of her that was such good news. And as soon as we pulled into the driveway spot, I turned in the, in the mirror and I said to her, go. And she just exploded. There's a party. <laughs> and literally Christmas is like that. Like it's the, you know, the angels, I feel like God the Father just turns to the angels who are like busting, like all of heaven's like, but we've got so good news, you know, and God's like, go ahead, go now. And the angels are like, Dah! 
<laughs> joy to the world, you know, like it's this explosion. Uh, why are we joyful? Like what is joy about? Joy is about there is good news coming to the world. Joy is about Jesus restoring things that are broken. Joy is about this reconciliation where we thought we were enemies and now we're made right. Joy is about a future and a hope. Joy is about God making things right for your life in your life, with people around you, for the whole world. See, uh, joy is for the world and it's for you. And this is what we're hoping this Advent, that you'd be bursting with joy. Well, Jeremiah was a bullfrog singing joy to the world because Jesus is coming and he has come. Now that is good news. That should bring us great joy that Jesus is coming and he's ushering in a new way to love and to live. Thanks so much for that reminder, Danielle. Well, let's pray and light our third Advent candle representing joy. Dear Jesus, help us focus on you during this busy season. May we stay aware of the joy you bring into our lives. May we be joy givers to the world. We want to find you in the everyday moments and come with hearts of gratitude and joy to your manger on Christmas. Amen. Joy to the world, the Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. In heaven and nature sing. In heaven and nature sing. In heaven and It's one of my favorite Christmas songs. Mm. Hey, I'm Brooke Nichols, and this is my husband, Steve. And today I'm just going to talk a little bit about what it looks like to find joy in this Christmas season, but not only in this Christmas season, in all areas of our life. Mm. Isaiah 29 reads, The meek shall increase their joy in the Lord. The humble will be filled with fresh joy from the Lord, mm. and the poor will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. You know, the word joy, uh, it's this feeling of great pleasure. I think about what the word happiness means versus the word joy. And mm. happiness is just this like fleeting emotion. We all know emotions come and emotions go. I mean, I can testify to that. I know there was a time in my life where I was leaning so heavily on, the, on my own happiness. Uh, and I was looking for happiness to come from other people. And, you know, people just let you down. Mm. And... Uh, Nehemiah 8 reads, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And in that time of trying to um, uh, feel my own happiness in different circumstances and situations, I was depleted of all my strength because I wasn't operating out of the joy of the Lord. Mm. Um, I just pray that uh, in this Christmas season, that with whatever you're walking through, whatever you're going through, that you would find joy. Uh, the, the, the day that Christ was born, God gifted us, gifted us joy. And it's inexpressible, it's, it's overwhelming, and it's genuine. And there's just nothing like the joy of the Lord. So I just pray that you would lean into that and you would experience the joy of the Lord this season and always. Mm. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare room. In heaven and nature sing, in heaven and nature sing. Fields and floods 
rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Well, thank you, Brooke and Steve. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. Yes, what joy that is. And we want to continue this message of joy across Canada and to the world. So during this Christmas season, we at See Here Love want to give you the opportunity to join our community and support us through prayer and resources. We'd love for you to sign up for our free See Here Love newsletter, where you will receive fresh content and offers and videos and all kinds of good stuff and fun stuff. And it's free. So go to our website right now at seeherelove.com and click on sign up for the newsletter. It's so easy. And this is the exciting part. We also want to offer for a minimum donation, never before done, for only $64, this See Here Love gift set, which includes our limited edition Cheryl See Here Love tote bag. Go girl. Yes. Speaking of joy, Woo! listen up. I want you to see this baby, <laughs> hear what I have to say, because you're going to love this one. This is our See Here Love tote bag, and it is yours with a small donation of $64. This is going to hold your shoes, yes. your purse, your bag. Uh, groceries, books if you're a reader, uh, your laptop. Lunch and bag. Lunch, lunch bag. bag. Uh, my flip-flops and swimsuit. Everything. For the beach, <laughs> on vacation. Everything. It is the perfect travel bag and it's yours with a small donation. You're helping us bring joy to people and you're going to look pretty joyful in this oh, snazzy yes. little number. Yes. And also included in the gift set are mugs that we'll all pick up yes. here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Look at our mugs with our See Here Love logo and on the back side here it's your seen, heard, and deeply loved by God are saying but Joanna, what is that? You, you want the yeah. women to do something with these. Well, we want to know where people are having coffee with us. So if you yeah. have the mug, or even if you don't have the mug, tag us in the photo telling us where you are yes. watching the show. We'd love to know. We'd love to have a coffee. A tea is fun, too. <laughs> a tea as well. Yeah. Amazing. So how fun is this? The bag and the mug for only a minimum donation of 64 will send you these two limited See Here Love items that we know you will use and enjoy. Make sure you post yeah. and tag where you are. And all you have to do is go to our website at seeherelove.com. Click on the picture of this gift set. Follow yeah. the directions on the page. It's so easy. And uh, we want to see these all over the world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All over the world. Because we know that you're watching and listening all over the world. We want to see these while you're drinking your coffee and tea in our mugs. So thanks in advance for your support. Well, ladies, joy. Some last minute thoughts on joy. When you're thinking about our viewers and listeners, what's some encouragement that we can leave with them about joy and that the Prince of Peace, the King mm. of Kings, gives joy to us? Some last thoughts. For me, um, joy is ultimately empowering. Mm -hmm. because it gives you those tools. It is that tool with which you overcome the instability, the fears of this world, and it's something that God, again, has given to us, yes. and so claim it. Claim it. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Colleen? Claim it, reach down, and get it. Access it. The choice is, the choice is yours. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. up to you. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Joanna? I love that song, like, make, may every heart prepare him room. Mm -hmm. When you make room for Christ in your life, mm -hmm. you have joy. Yeah, that's good. And Cheryl? Joy is eternal, and in eternity, there's no time. You know, happiness is Monday, Tuesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, joy is throughout all of life's uh, circumstances. So be joy ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this the joy givers, right? Yeah. Be joy givers as the one who gives us joy, wants us to be. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you, Cheryl, Joanna, Lisa, for being with us again today. And Colleen, thank you for your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, we hope that you were encouraged and inspired by today's show as we lit our third Advent candle of joy. And we pray that you will take time this Christmas season to breathe, to dig deep, to listen, to be silent, and to anticipate and prepare for the birth of Jesus, the joy giver. And we pray that you will know that Jesus is your greatest gift. It's a great sign. He is a great sign of love from God. And we pray that he will give you the grace and strength that you need each day, and that you'll trust him to give you great joy this Christmas season. And always know, that you are seen, you are heard, and deeply loved by God. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas.